What is up YouTube? This is Alex AK Foreign. I haven't been making many videos recently because all sorts of hectic stuff has been going on, but this video has been in my head for quite some time now. So a few months ago I bought a dead GTX 580 from ASUS with the Direct CU2 cooler, mostly to practice my heatsink removal skills and make a little video about it. But well, since I don't have a good camera or a smartphone with a camera good enough, I couldn't really film it. So I found a buddy with an iPhone 6 who was actually okay with helping me. But anyway, here's me trying to remove the cooler from uh, this huge triple slot card. Now the thing with the DirectCU2 cooler is that even though it's a three slot card, the heatsink itself is only two slots with the third slot being taken up by the fans. This card has lots of bolts everywhere and I tried to remove them all but in the end the only thing that I needed was to remove the four spring tension screws on the back side of the card. Now the back side as you can see has a neat little back plate but it's mostly for aesthetics because the thing is so flimsy it'll barely dissipate any heat not even talking about helping the cart not sag. Now after removing these four screws I was able to take the heatsink off of the cart and here we can see the PCB itself. The fans are connected with the PCB via a fan header that is easy to remove. Now if I wanted to take the shroud off of the heatsink it had some very strange connections that I uh, couldn't take off but maybe I'll take a closer look some other day. I'm guessing that most probably it's still possible to remove the shroud from the cart. The heatsink has a total of five heat pipes directly contacting the GPU which is uh, a fairly decent amount. Now I'm not a PCB specialist or electrical engineer or anything but judging by what I could see I'd say it's a 10 power phase design. Not sure about the memory module phases but most probably it's uh, 2 so it's most likely a 10 plus 2 phase design. But don't quote me on that. You can understand how many power phases the card has mostly by just counting the number of inductors, the square things next to the round capacitors. The memory phases are usually similar inductors near the core ones, or on the same side at least, only with a different name. Anyway, most probably it's a 10 plus 2 power phase design. In terms of memory, there's a total of 12 modules, each 128 megabyte which brings the card's total memory to 1536 me megabytes or around 1.5 gigabytes. Now by today's standards that's not a lot but back in 2010-2011 when this card released that was quite a significant amount of memory. Another thing we can do is remove the VRM heatsink which basically helps dissipate the heat from the VRMs and cools them. A thermal pad here is good for helping heat get to the metal that has better heat dissipating properties. I'm starting to remove the screws for the, from the back plate but the memory on the phone will run out soon so the video abruptly ended somewhere in between but you can trust me that there wasn't anything interesting under the back plate of the cart. So this is it, I will try uh, using a heat gun to reanimate this card and get it working again. So if I get lucky there will be another video someday when I get the heat gun. Now if you have any comments or questions then please leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video then be sure to subscribe as I am planning more videos in the future. Especially concerning the AMD cards released this year, the RX 480, 470 and 460 which to choose and in a few months most probably I'll make a video about the GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti. Again looking at the specs of most of the released uh, add-in board partner cards and comparing them and talking about the cooler design and so on. I thank you for your attention and hope to see you later.